Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to point out something that I noticed and I mentioned it briefly in the very first video. And that is by using the two live scopes, you're able to see um, in a roundabout way, it's not per perfect, but the width of your beam. Um, and you're able to see just how narrow the beam is. Now, when you put the radial grid overlay, um, I've talked about this before in perspective. It's one of my favorite. <clears throat> it's one of my favorite uh, methods uh, of using the grid. I don't use the square grids at all in forward or perspective, but I will use the radial grid overlay. First, I want to talk about why I use the radial grid overlay. When I was first using perspective mode, if you saw a fish, for example, and you were pointing, say, straight ahead, and you saw a fish off to the side, you can use those radial uh, lines to aim your rod, uh, to aim your cast. You can just take your rod, lay it on that line. Um, Brandon Polynook does this a lot with uh, Humminbird 360. That's where I got this idea from. But when you're using uh, the radial grid overlay with two units, the forward and the perspective, you're able to get, give yourself a good judge of how wide the beam is. Um, and by by judging that, you'll be able to see um, one of the things that I noticed right off the bat was just how narrow the beam truly is. Now, on these images, you're going to see the lines are 15 degrees to the right of center. Now, that's even wider than um, the 20 degree width of the beam. It's about five degrees wider. But even being that, it still gives you a great a judge of how wide that beam is because the beam will actually be inside those two 15 degree lines. One of the things that I noticed was that even when I thought I made a very accurate or straight cast, I would still be off to the side uh, of that center line. I, I would think, man, I'm right on the money and I would make that cast. And when I reel it back, I'd be off to the side of the beam left or right. And then I'd realize all this time that I thought I was making very accurate straight cast, I wasn't. And I saw this by using the radial grid uh, overlay feature on the perspective mode. So that right there in itself has shown me just how narrow the beam is. But let's take a look at it now and, and just kind of and just notice, you know, the width of the beam. And then also notice as that bait is coming back to the boat. You know, as it gets closer to the boat, let's just say, for example, your right hand, you're reeling off to the left-hand side or the right-hand side, whatever side you reel to. As you come off to the side, you'll notice a lot of times it'll stay in the perspective mode, but you'll lose it on the forward mode. That's because when it gets really narrow, that beam gets very extremely narrow, um, you'll lose it. And so even uh, something as large as an A-rig can very easily leave that beam. I know this is a long opening monologue, but you're finna see this in the video. Let's go. So there's a few things we're gonna talk about here. Notice how there's a very big tree at about 10 to 15 feet right there. At about 15 feet. Notice how it's almost completely out of the beam, yet it's still picking up on the edge of the forward beam. Now there's two trees out there about 25 foot. Notice how they're fading but they're still showing up at the edge of the beam. And see, a lot of times when you're trying to clear your picture up, you're thinking, man, I've got this artifact. Well, when you look at the perspective mode, you realize there's things outside that beam that are just barely catching the edge. And that, my friends, leads me to the point and leads me to what I believe is the cause of our beams having this uh, crazy stitch mark. Where... Sometimes, for example, if you're very close in that 15 foot degree, 15 foot mark, when there's something on the very edge of the beam, I believe that the edge of the beam is catching it and then bouncing those rays toward the other beams that are crossing in front. Now, right here, there's a, there's something on the very edge of it, and it's catching the edge of that beam and bouncing it toward that tree, and therefore it's creating an ugly stitching problem. Now, I don't know how to fix this as of yet, but I think now that I have seen it in the perspective mode and the forward mode, we know what it is. I know the opening monologue was 
very long and I know the video probably wasn't as long as some would hope, but I just wanted to just draw that point and let you see and learn from that just how narrow the beam is. Uh, I, I think it's important that we start to really dial in that beam and I think using two of them will. But I want to bring to uh, another point, uh, some of my friends down in Australia and uh, there's a page I follow in Australia has brought up another way to use this. Now, I, I remember when they did the update, but I forgot about it. I'll be honest, I forgot about it. Um, you can use, you can hook two live scope units up to uh, one head unit and you can put the beam, uh, the perspective and the forward on the same page. Now, this we're going to require, of course, a larger unit. You can do it on the smaller units, but it will require a larger unit and I'm going to show that in my next video, just to kind of give you guys an option to uh, th of ways to think about doing this. So if you have a 12-inch unit, don't think you have to have two units. And I'm going to be honest, um, I liked it when I used it. Um, and I may think about, you know, using this in certain situations as opposed to using two units where you're looking above the unit, you know, this, and then you're switching back to this. If you have them both on there at the same time, you know, you can... You can do some things with this, and I think maybe, just maybe, that might be my preferred way. Still toying and still playing with it. But, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Don't forget, join me at PTG. I'll be there tomorrow and Saturday. I'll be doing four seminars. Also, I'm going to put these seminars live uh, on YouTube and, and Facebook. I'm going to put them live on YouTube and Facebook. I'm also going to... Uh, uh, be tour touring the show. We're gonna be doing some interviews. We're gonna have—I mean, we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna have a great time, and uh, you might even get to see a little behind-the-scenes stuff at the cabin. Uh, Wally Marshall's gonna be there. My friend Danny from Formis Fishing Electronics is gonna be there. Um, hopefully, Matt from Three Pound Fishing will be there. I hope, think he's gonna be there tomorrow. I'm not real sure of that. I know he's been teasing it a little bit. I don't know why he teases like that. <laughs> guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Ring the bell.